when I started gar fishing, I had to watch a ton of videos and I never really found one video that showed me how to do everything from start to finish to catch alligator gar. So that's what I'm aiming to do in this video. I'm gonna go over all the details from the rods, reels, to the baits, to the leaders, all the information you're gonna need to know to get started on this. And I'm talking specifically big alligator gar around four foot or larger. And I'll also leave links to everything in the description to make it all easier for you. And of course, if you find any of this information helpful, make sure to give the video a like. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and think about subscribing. I am trying to put out weekly fishing videos for you guys. So yeah, let's just dive right into this. Now, gar fishing is like any other kind of fishing. There are tons of different methods and systems you can use, you know, to get the job done. And there's, I'm sure there's tons of people out there who have their own methods of gar fishing. And I'm not, that's fine. That's great. I'm not here to disprove any of that. If you got something that works for you, good go for it I'm not here to prove any of that wrong I'm here to show you know basically the simplest way to get started if you're just thinking about getting into gar fishing or you're just now starting to gar fish that's what this video is for okay so let's first talk about the rods so the most important thing about a fishing rod for alligator gar is the rod strength you're gonna want a medium to medium heavy rod you want something that can hold heavy line and heavy lures and that information should be printed somewhere on the side of the rod when you go to buy them. It uh, should be somewhere right around here, right above the cork. Uh, so for instance, this one is 20 to 50 pound line, up to six ounce of uh, lures or leads, whatever. Um, this is a tiger stick, Shakespeare tiger stick. It's a beast for 70 bucks. Uh, seven foot, this thing is a monster. The length of the rod is going to depend on where you're fishing. So if you're fishing small creeks, rivers, bayous, you don't have to cast that far. You get a lot of overhang, six, seven, eight foot, you know, possibly right around that range. That's going to be a good length. Now, if you're in a bay area, further out by the coast, massive rivers, you may want to go up to a big uh, surf rod somewhere between eight and ten foot. It really depends on where you're fishing for the length of it. But medium to medium heavy, that's where you want to be. It's all about the strength of the rod. Okay, so once you get your rod, you're going to want to get your reel. What kind of reel you use, it uh, does not matter. If you like spinning reels, use spinning reels. If you like bait casters, use bait casters. If you like conventional, use conventional. Use whatever you're comfortable with when it comes to the style of the reel. That does not matter. What does matter when you purchase a reel is you need one that can hold a lot of line. A big alligator car can strip two to 400 yards of line off before you even set the hook. So you need to hold a lot, a lot, a lot of line. So get the bigger reel you can. Obviously bigger is more expensive. Get what you can afford. But if you really want to hook these monsters, you're going to need a lot of line. Also, one of the other reasons you're going to want a big reel is because larger reels generally have a stronger drag, um, what do you call it, drag resistance, right? So for instance, this reel is a Penn Spin Fisher. It has about 40 pounds of drag resistance, which means when that fish goes to pull, he has to exert 40 pounds of pressure to strip the line off the reel to activate the drag system. Smaller reels generally have somewhere between 10 to 15 pounds of drag. So can you fight an alligator gar in a small reel? Yes, the alligator gar is gonna mostly be winning. You're gonna have to finesse it. You're gonna have to wear that gar down. You get the bigger ones with the bigger resistance. You control the gar, you control the fight. So just trust me, get the bigger ones. Okay, so that brings us to the line. So I am gonna suggest that you use braid. One of the main reasons you wanna use braid is because you can get a lot more braid on the line compared to mono at the same strength. So for instance, 40 pounds of mono on this reel, I can get 260 yards. 40 pound braid, I can get 730 yards. So there you go, guys. 730 yards of line compared to 260 yards, okay? Braid is thinner, you get more on the reel, and you're gonna want more more line, because like I said, a big alligator gar can easily strip off two to 400 yards of line before you even set the hook. So you're gonna wanna use the braid strictly for the capacity uh, aspect of it. And when it comes to the strength of the braid, 80 pound uh, test strength or heavier, I generally use somewhere between 80 and 100. I know a lot of people use all the way up to 150 pound. It's gonna depend on two reasons. One, your budget, right? And two, what reel you have. So if you have a 150 pound line, you're gonna get less line on the reel than you would at a 100 pound line. So it's gonna come down to price 
and your reel, how much line can you get on it to make your best judgment there on, on your situation. Okay, now that you got your rod, you got your reel, you got your braid, you're gonna need to attach uh, a leader, right? So I've already made a detailed video about leaders. You should see a link somewhere above my head. You can click on that and it'll go into great detail on how to make the leaders, how to crimp wire, what kind of hooks to use, all that information. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the gist of it. You wanna use a heavy duty swivel, 200 pound plus test weight. You're gonna to wanna to attach that to wire. Now you can either use seven strand cable or you can use single strand wire, either which way. Again, you want this to be about 200 pound or more. The reason you wanna use wire is so that the guard's razor sharp teeth don't cut your line. They will slice right through braid, they will slice right through mono. Steel cable's the way to go. For the hook at the end of your leader, you really have any option you can use a treble hook, a J hook, a circle hook, an octopus hook, they all work. So go ahead and click on that link, learn all the details on how to make gar leaders, how to crimp, like I said, all that haywire twists, all the details in there. Okay, I wanted to reshoot this part of the video just to make sure that I uh, tell everyone when to use what style leader, which would depend on your water conditions, right? So if you're in a very calm area, Without a lot of current and without a lot of weeds, you can just use a very simple leader hook to cable to swivel to the main line. Now, if you're in an area that has some current, um, you don't want your bait to float down or float against a bank. You can go from the hook to the cable to a weight. This will help keep your bait in place in a current. So, if you're in an area that has a lot of current and a lot of weeds, you'd want to go from your hook to your cable, you put a float on there, which keeps the bait out of the weeds, to a weight, which keeps the weight, or keeps the bait anchored in the current. So this is uh, one that I use quite a bit, actually. For anywhere you have current and you have weeds, you wanna use this rig. The style leader you use depends on your water conditions. So again, if you have current, you wanna use a weight. If you have current and weeds, you wanna use a weight with a float. And if you're in calm water, not a lot of weeds, you can literally just go hook, leader, to mainline. Best bait to use. General rule of thumb here is match the hatch, all right? So if your body of water where you're fishing for gar has carp, use carp. If it has shad, use shad. If it has mullet, use mullet. It all works. Shad, carp, buffalo, tilapia. So you can use any of those baits. Fresh is best, obviously. So if you can catch your fish, keep it on ice that's best. Otherwise, if you want to catch your fish and freeze it, best thing to do there is to thaw it out naturally. Don't try to defrost it in hot water or in a microwave or anything like that. You want to thaw it out naturally over time, slowly. So what I personally like to do is I like to catch my bait the night before. Uh, that way I can go early in the morning. So I'll catch my bait, put it in a cooler with ice, and just leave that uh, overnight and it's ready to go in the morning. That's it. Easy peasy. So you're either going to have to learn how to use a cast net or you're gonna have to learn how to carp fish. I got videos on how to carp fish here. Click on those, check them out. So once you have your bait, you're gonna to wanna to cut it into two inch chunks about the size of your palm, right? So I mean, that could be a 12 inch mullet, could be three pieces, a nine inch shad, could be two pieces of bait. Depending on your carp, you're gonna to wanna to cut the carp into two to four inch sections of bait, something that fits easily in your hand. Put that on the hook and you should be good to go. Um, use what's local, fresh is best. If you don't know how to use a cast net, learn to use one. That'll change your fishing game. So how do you fish for gar? The actual method of fishing for gar is a lot like catfish. You put the bait on, and you toss it out there, and you wait. But the main difference between catfishing and gar fishing, when a gar grabs your bait, it's gonna run with it. And you're gonna need to let it run. And it goes against all your fishing intuition. You need to let that gar run and strip out line. Just take out line. You have to wait for that gar to get the hook closer to the back of its jaw. That snout on the gar is all bone. So the further back in the snout it is, closer to the jaw line, that's where you'll have a better chance of setting the hook. So the amount of time you let the gar run is really up to you. You can let that gar run and stop and run and stop and just wait for him to literally swallow the bait. If you do that, you're gonna gut hook him, the fish will die. But again, if you're keeping it for food, 
it doesn't matter. I do suggest that if you are sport fishing to use the circle hooks, octopus hooks, J hooks, and you should probably let it run only a few minutes and then set the hook. So there's a few ways that you can let a gar run with the line. So you can do a couple things. You can just leave your bail open and just let the line come off. Right? You can have your bail closed, but leave your drag super, super loose so you can just run with it. Or you can use something called a live liner. I'll get into that in a second. So if you have your drag super loose, you're gonna have to open the bail, pull out a bunch of line, tighten down your drag, close the bail, set the hook. You can do that, it works. If you have your bail open, you're gonna have to watch your bail continuously because you're just gonna have to watch to see when line comes out. You're not gonna hear it. But you need to make sure if you're doing that that your drag is set to where you need it so when you close the bail, you can set the hook. What I like to use is a feature called a live liner or, or a bait runner or whatever it is. And, it, and basically what that is is it's a second drag system always on the bottom of the reel. So you have your main drag on top that you set and you have your live liner here. And what this does is it leaves it in free spool. So when that's when that's activated, your main drag is still activated, the line can come out. And you click that, boom, you can set the hook. Because this is already in place where you need it. I find this a lot easier. The guard's running, you click that lever, set the hook, easy peasy. Similar thing if you're using a conventional reel, you can just leave the reel on free spool, click off the free spool lever, set the hook, and you're good to go. Now when, it's, when it comes to setting the hook guys, you're going to need to set that hook hard. You got to have your drag set to where the, the line won't strip out because that snout on the gar is all bone. And if that's where the hook is, you need to try to pierce some of that bone or at least some of the tissue and cartilage around its mouth. So you got to set that hook hard guys, don't be afraid. I mean, yank back on that reel. And you only got to yank back at least once. If your drag was a little too loose, give it a second yank. So once you got it, once the gar is on the line, once you've set that hook, keep the line taut. Keep it tight. That hook, if you just got it in the snout, in that small piece of bone or cartilage, that hook can come out or it can spit the bait out. Keep that line tight and you'll have better odds of landing that fish. Okay, so one of the <laughs> one of the few things I learned the hard way on, on gar fishing is once you've hooked the gar, once you got them to the bank, you gotta land that gar. So gar have very sharp teeth, they have very sharp scales, they get very, very big and heavy. You're going to need a lasso. Uh, I know that sounds funny. If you don't know how to make a lasso, quickly look up a lasso. Uh, you could actually use a carabiner tied to a rope, clip it on, and um, use that method. Uh, you want to get the lasso behind the gills to be able to pull that fish on shore. I mean, these things can get up to a couple hundred pounds. Um, you know, unless you plan to get in the water with this fish to take your photos, then you're going to need a lasso. Now, if you plan to eat this fish, you could just use a gaff, kills the fish, up to you. Um, one of the main questions I get asked all the time, and the one everyone wants to know, is the where and when. Where and when? When is the best time to guard fish? Is it middle of the day? Is it early morning? Is it overnight, in the middle of the night? The answer is yes. Gar bite all the time, just like any other fish. You need to learn your location and your time. They will bite in the middle of the night. They will bite in the middle of the day. They will bite early in the morning. Any time's a good time to go gar fishing. The thing is, gar can live basically anywhere. Fresh water, brackish water, swamp water. They can live in all of it. They have air bladders. They can live in just about any water situation. They generally like slow moving water. They're typically found lower US, Central America. So if you look in the rivers, big lakes, bayous, you can generally find them. So you really just gotta do the homework. You gotta get out there. You gotta put some lines in the water and see if they're there. See if you spot them. You've been sitting there for a few hours. Have you seen any surface to get the air? Find your right spot. Find when they're most active in your spot and just get out there, man. All right, so I think that just about covers everything start to finish that you need to know to get started gar fishing. And that's what I wanted to do with this video. I wanted to try to capture everything from rods, reels, lines, baits, hooks, how to, how to let the fish run, the where and the when. I try to cover all of it in one video, one resource tool, 
So I hope that helped you guys, and if you did, if you found any part of this video informational, feel free to, to, to give me a like on this video. And if you haven't done so already, you know, click that subscribe button. Uh, I'm trying to put out videos, fishing videos, at least once a week. Some are how-to, some are just great fishing trip. But um, yeah, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and look forward to making this next video for you guys.